right, let's have a look at balancing equations involving metals and oxygen then. So here we have lithium react with oxygen to form lithium oxide, Li2O. Write the balanced chemical equation for this reaction. So your first step is to find out lithium on the periodic table, which is Li, if you didn't know it. And then oxygen, you need to remember, is diatomic. So instead of O, you need to have O2. And then you're given the formula for lithium oxide in this question, which is Li2O. Now usually in these questions, you'll get one mark for your reactants and you'll get one mark for your products. So remember, even if you can't balance or you're struggling with it, if you put that in, you're going to get some marks anyway. Now your next step is to have a look at whether you're balanced or not. So look on your left and your right side of the arrow and figure out how many of each element you've got. So I have one lithium and two oxygens on the left and on the right I have two lithiums and one oxygen. Now if you're not sure on how I did that, go back to the previous videos on balancing equations and that will go through that for you. Okay, so let's have a go at doing it then. Now remember my rule where I said take the compound that's got an odd number in that's really large and make it even. So I could go with my lithium or I could go with my oxygen, both of them are odd. However, my oxygen over here is in the largest compound. So let's make it even by putting a 2 in front of it. I then need to recount, so instead of having two lithiums, I've doubled that, so two times two gives me four, and then oxygens, I had one, I've doubled it, so two times one gives me two. So my oxygens are now balanced. The next thing I need to do is I've got four lithiums on the right, but only one on the left. So what number do I need to put in front of my lithium to give me that? It's a four, because remember, I'm multiplying, not adding. So that's now balanced and I get my third mark for having that fully correct. Right, let's move on to the second example then. This one says calcium reacts with oxygen to form calcium oxide, CaO. Write the balanced chemical equation for this reaction. So the first step is find calcium on the periodic table, which is Ca. Oxygen we now know is diatomic, so it's O2. And calcium oxide we've been given. So you get one mark for the reactants and one mark for the products. All that's left now is to do the balancing. So same again, we write down the elements we've got and we find out how much we've got on the left and on the right hand side of the arrow. So in this case I have one calcium and two oxygens on the left and I've got one of each on the right. So in this case it doesn't matter what I do but let's have a look at oxygen because that's the one that's unbalanced. So I need to go to the right hand side where I've only got one. I need two of them, so I put a two in front of everything, remembering I can't put that little two at the end. So that gives me two calciums as well as two oxygens. So now the oxygens are balanced, but the calciums aren't. I need two, so I can put a two in front of the CA, and that now makes it balanced, and my whole thing is correct, which gives me my third mark. We'll have one more example then, which is aluminium reacting with oxygen to form aluminium oxide, Al2O3. So aluminium is Al on the periodic table. Oxygen, you need to remember, is O2. And we've been given aluminium oxide, Al2O3 again. So the next step is how many aluminiums and oxygens on the right and the left, counted up. So on the left-hand side, I have one aluminium and I have two oxygens. And then on the right, I have two aluminiums and three oxygens. So remember the rule, which states that the big compound, which has got an uneven number in, double it. So that's our oxygen in this case, which is in the aluminium oxide. So make it even. So let's go with Al2O3 and put a two in front of it. We can then recount. So I had two aluminiums, I've doubled it, so I've now got four. And I had three oxygens, I've doubled it, so I've now got six. I then go over to the left hand side, I've got 2, I need 6, so what do I multiply 2 by to get 6? The answer is 3, so I put a big 3 in front of my O2, and that's balanced. And then aluminium, I have 4, so I'll put a 4 in front of the AL. And that gives me my balanced reaction and my 3 marks out of 3. Okay, you should be familiar with that now then. We're going to move on to something a bit more challenging. This is where you're given the name of the reactants, but not given the formula of the oxide that it forms. So what you need to be able to do for this is work out the charges of the different elements, and therefore work out the formula of the compound that's formed, the formula of the oxide. If you haven't covered that yet, 
you can either watch the video on it or wait for that to be covered and skip past this section for now. So I'm putting a link in the bottom right hand corner of this video with how you can do that if you want to check that before you continue with this video. What I will do is give you a quick recap. So we'll have a look at sodium oxide as an example. So I need to work out what the formula is for sodium oxide. And to be able to do that, I need to know the charges of both sodium and oxygen. And to do that, I need to know their position in the periodic table. So if you look on the periodic table, you'll see that sodium is in group one and oxygen is in group six. That means that sodium has one electron on the outer shell and oxygen has six electrons on the outer shell. Then you need to find out whether they need to lose or gain them. So sodium, it's easier to lose one than it is to gain seven. And oxygen, it's easier to gain two than lose six. That means that sodium has a charge of plus one and oxygen has a charge of two minus. Now again, if that doesn't make sense to you, go back, watch the Finding the Formula recap, which I've put in the bottom right hand corner once more. But let's move past that, presuming that you can do it. So we've got Na plus and O2 minus. How do we find the formula? Well, remember, you need to rub out the charges. So you take out the positives and the negatives, leaving you just with the numbers. And then you take the number and you swap them around like I've done there. So it becomes Na2O. So my formula for sodium oxide is Na2O. So I've now got my formula. All that's left is to balance. So we have a look at sodium and oxygen then. I've got one sodium and two oxygens on the left and two sodiums and one oxygen on the right. My Na2O is a large compound that's got my odd number in. So I double that to make it even. That gives me two times one is two oxygens. And it gives me two times two, which is four sodiums. I now need to just go over to the left hand side and make it right. So I've got four sodiums on the right. I need to times my one by four and I've got two oxygens, all I need to do is times that by one, so I don't do anything. So that is my balanced equation. We're going to have a look at two more of finding the formula then. So this one is magnesium reacts with oxygen to form magnesium oxide, write the balanced equation. Magnesium you get off the periodic table is Mg. Oxygen, you've got to remember, is O2, diatomic. So we need magnesium oxide. So magnesium oxide, you find out the formula again. So you know that magnesium is in group 2. Oxygen is in group 6. That means that magnesium needs to lose 2 electrons and becomes 2 plus. Oxygen needs to gain 2 and becomes 2 minus. Now, if you remember from the finding of the formula video, these two are balanced, they've got the same number of positive and negative charges, therefore they cancel each other out. So you take out the charge, you take out the number, that leaves you with MgO as your formula. Balancing then is nice and straightforward. So you have Mg plus O2 goes to MgO. So I've got one magnesium and two oxygens on the left. I've got one magnesium and one oxygen on the right. I have two oxygens on the left, so I need to double my MgO, which gives me two of Mg and two of oxygen. Oxygen is now balanced. I just need to put a two in front of Mg, and that gives me two of each. So I, therefore, I have my balanced chemical equation and my full three marks. If we move on to the final example then, before I let you guys have a go, this one says aluminium oxidizes when left in the air and forms aluminium oxide. Now if it says oxidizes, that means you're adding oxygen to it, O2. Now you'll also notice this question says include state symbols. So that one gets you an extra mark and it's talking about what the state symbols are. So we'll have a look at that in a minute. So we know we've got aluminium, which is a solid. Oxygen, you should remember, is a gas, so that's plus O2 and put it into brackets gas. And then we need to find, find aluminium oxide. So aluminium is in group 3, oxygen is in group 6. Pretty much all these oxides you form are solid, so it's then about working out the formula. So as I said, aluminium group 3, oxygen group 6. Aluminium has 3 electrons in the outer shell and becomes 3 plus. Oxygen has 6 in the outer shell, needs to gain 2 and becomes 2 minus. We do the same thing again, where we rub out the charge, the plus and the minus, and then we swap the numbers. So the 2 goes down below the aluminium, and the 3 goes down below the oxygen. So my formula becomes Al2O3.
It's then just a case of balancing it then. So I have one aluminium and two oxygens on the left, and two aluminiums and three oxygens on the right. You take your odd compound and you double it. So I then have four aluminiums and six oxygens on the right. I need six, I've got two, so I put a three in front of my oxygens on the left, which gives me six, and that's balanced. I need four, I've got one, so I put a four in front of my aluminium, and therefore that's balanced. Okay, that's about everything, so let's let you guys have a go as well. Okay, let's have a look at a couple of questions then. So you've got two normal ones and one challenge one. Uh, the two normal ones are magnesium reacts with oxygen to form magnesium oxide, MgO. Write the balanced equation for the reaction with three marks. Question two is iron three reacts with oxygen in the air to form iron three oxide, Fe2O3. Uh, write the balanced equation for that. If you're feeling confident with those two and you want to push yourself further, have a go at the challenge, which is potassium reacts with oxygen to form potassium oxide, You've therefore got to work out the formula for potassium oxide and then write the balanced equation for the reaction. Have a go at all the questions you want to do and then we'll see how you've done in a min. Right, let's go through the first one then. So this one says magnesium reacts with oxygen to form magnesium oxide. So what we need to do is start off with our magnesium, which is Mg, you'll find that on the periodic table. Reacts with oxygen, you need to remember that oxygen is O2. Now when it says to form, you put your arrow in, and it gives you that it's MgO. The next thing you need to do is count up what you've got on either side. So you get one mark straight away for having these two right, and one mark for your product, and having it all together like that. Then you need to know, right, I've got one magnesium and one magnesium, two oxygens and one oxygen. So to be able to get my two oxygens over here, I need to put a two in front of there. So that now gives me two magnesiums, two oxygens, two oxygens, and only one magnesium. So I'll put a two in front of there. So you get one mark for the reactants, one mark for the products, and one mark for having it correctly balanced. On to question two then. So we have iron reacts with oxygen in the air to form iron oxide. So we start off with iron, which you find on the periodic table, is Fe. Oxygen, you need to remember, is diatomic, so it's O2 and you're given that iron oxide is Fe2O3. So once again, one mark for your reactants, one mark for your products. It's then a case of counting up. Right, I've got two ions here and one there, and I've got three oxygens here and two there. So really importantly, remember I said if you've got an odd number in a large compound, start by doubling that. So that gives me two times two is four um, ions, and then two times three is six oxygens. So I can put a 4 in front of my Fe, and they're balanced, and then I've got 2 oxygens here, 6 over here, so I put a 3 in front, because 3 times 2 gives me 6. And you get your third mark for the correct balancing, which would be that. And then finally, let's have a look at the challenge question, then, if you fancied having a go at it. So you start off exactly the same, you've got potassium, which is K, oxygen is diatomic, so O2, and then you've got to work out what potassium oxide is. So, key thing here is you have K plus, you know that because it's in group 1, and oxygen O2 minus, you know that because it's in group 6. If you're not sure, watch the video on finding the formula and ions, and that will tell you how to work that out. Once you've done that, you remove the charges, and then swap the numbers around like that. So I end up with the formula of K2O. And then it's a case of balancing, I've got one potassium and two there, and I've got two oxygens and one there. So take the odd number in the big compound, which is K2O, double it. So that gives me two times my number of potassium, so four Ks, so I need to have four over here. And then I've got two times my one oxygen, which is now balanced, which gives me my third mark. Okay, hopefully that's everything you need to know about balancing reactions involving oxygen and metals. There are a couple of questions for you, one which is a challenge one and one which is just a normal one. Have a go at one or both depending on how confident you're feeling. So the first one is gallium reacts with oxygen to form gallium oxide, Ga2O3. Write the balanced equation for the reaction. And then your challenge is cesium reacts with oxygen to form cesium oxide. So remember back to how we found the formula, look onto the video if you're not sure. I'll put that link in the credits at the end. And that ends this video.
Hi guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, click on the subscribe button down below, visit the website and you can find me on Facebook and Twitter.